Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here. Hope you're happy, healthy and well. It is time for some new life lessons that I received from The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. And as you can see, once again, I've marked all the parts in the book that have made such an impact on me. This book was published in 1988, so it's not a new book that is out. And in fact, I'm sure many people who are watching this have possibly already read the book and have may even seen the movie starring Anthony Hopkins and Emma Thompson. I saw the movie over the weekend. It is slightly different to the book, but please, I would recommend you read the book over the movie. Now let's talk about some of the life lessons I got out of this book. There are a lot of different themes in this book that can be aligned directly to what is happening nowadays and also to what is happening in a lot of our work and our thinking about our work currently in particular the type of people we want to work for or the type of employers we want to work so with the themes of this book around dignity around professionalism around human connections how people relate to us each other also about class and privilege are all prevalent in this storyline i'm not going to go into detail about what happens simply because you can actually search that however i'm going to pull out certain themes that i got out of this book based on the storyline so in a nutshell the storyline is about mr stevens who is a butler and he currently is serving an American guy by the name of Mr. Faraday in the Darlington estate. Now he's an old world butler. He is a butler who values his work. He values his training and he comes from an old world, a, an old perspective where it is all about serving your master, making sure that whatever service that he does is all for the master of the house to be able to achieve his aims. When I was reading this book, it was, I had in my head the voice of Carson, who was the butler in Downton Abbey. And there were elements of Downton Abbey, if you've seen the show and know what I'm talking about, where there was a conflict between the movement of time and eras from one era to the next and the, the changes of thinking that happened with regards to that. In some way, there's a lot of that in this book. Mr. Stevens, this old world butler who now has to reduce staff on request by Mr. Faraday, the American, is told to take a bit of a holiday to go away for a little while because Mr. Faraday has to return to America for a little bit of time. And it is Mr. Stevens first time away from Darlington estate after years and years of service to not only Mr. Faraday, but his previous owner, who was Lord Darlington and Lord Darlington in this book, was someone of a, I guess, an, I wouldn't say innocent, but he was a pretty naive person, especially at a time in history, just before World War II in England, where England was getting ready of impending war with Nazi Germany. And so, as you can understand, the environment was fraught with people trying to understand where their allegiances lay. And so Lord Darlington struck me as someone who was quite naive, someone who tried to appease, someone who wanted to make his mark in the world. And here we have Mr. Stevens, the butler, saying that he has nothing against Lord Darlington. His ultimate aim was to do everything to ensure that Lord Darlington achieves his aims, which is a fair enough call and in fact at this point in the book early on in the book I thought to myself that Mr. Stevens was the embodiment 
of a true professional. And we all know these people who value their work so much, their profession so much, that what they do to the highest level, to the highest exacting standard, they are obviously commendable people. They obviously have some kind of gene that I don't have, but who are people who can put themselves below and put their service above. So in the early part of the book, I used to like Mr. Stevens. And in fact, I still did even towards the end of the book. But there was a certain part of the book where I started to go, oh, hang on a second. Where's Lord Darlington's allegiances lie? The more I read about the type of people that he was inviting to his estate for these so-called conferences before the war and the names that were mentioned in this book who I then looked up on Wikipedia and saw that they too were Nazi sympathizers I started to put one and one together and realized that Lord Darlington was somehow a pawn or somehow naive in trying to think that he could prevent war by appeasing I guess uh, the both English and the Nazi interests. So at that stage, my, I guess my feeling towards Mr. Stevens, Stevens wavered a bit because this was the point in time where I started to question if your employer was doing something dodgy, if your employer did something that was against your values, misaligned to your own values, would you continue working for them? So hence, this was a life lesson for me, thinking that the topic of who we work for or who we choose to align ourselves with, do we have a responsibility? Are we responsible for our employers or are we doing what we need to do? Now, in Mr. Stevens' case, he wanted to uphold dignity and he wanted to uphold professionalism and he didn't like this idea of this new thinking of butlers going from one estate to another trying to find a better career or better pay. In this world, in this day and age, this kind of ring rang home for me too because in the past I too all also had put in my head that you know I'd love to work for employers who have a better or a bigger goal in mind who can you know help the world or do their bit in the world but ultimately have i been responsible or am i responsible if not after all i've worked in the military after work all i've worked at a, a bank after all i've worked in the corporate world but i too in some element of my own work wanted to uphold i guess the dignity and the professionalism of my own field which was learning and development and to help people learn and to help people grow through helping them understand you know social tools learning technologies and so forth but does that mean because i was working for a corporate or i was working for a multinational or i was working for a bank or the military does that mean that i'm responsible for for that so you can see how this theme is quite relevant to today and in fact, what I also liked about this book was while Mr. Stevens was going on his journey, it was a short three day journey to go and find Miss Kempton, who was one of the female um, servants who was under his employ many years ago, over 20 years ago, and who is having considerable marriage problems. And also he had received a letter from her and he felt that in that letter, she was pining or wanting to come back to Darlington Estate because she was reminiscing of all the great days that they had back then. He thought to himself that he'll leave Darlington Estate on this little short holiday, go and find Miss Kempton, who was, could have been, a love interest for him and maybe entice her back, maybe seek answers that he was wanting. What we find out though was over time, he, his dignity and professionalism was such that he did not let down his guard. He did not become human. He did not show his empathetic side. And in fact, throughout the book, 
he looked at people from an arm's distance I guess arm's length and he wondered how can they banter with each other he wanted to be able to banter the simple knack of being able to communicate on a one-to-one -one basis with someone to have the bantering back and forth that was something he didn't have but he wanted to because he felt that that was something missing from his life after all if you have someone who has such high exacting standards and in fact his father also who was a butler had high exacting standards he didn't have any other I guess outlet or any other example for him to understand how to balance dignity and professionalism and this work hard ethic that he had grown up to also someone showing a bit of humanity someone showing curiosity someone being able to question someone being able to see the flaws of the person that he was serving and to understand and to under understand his place and what he could do ultimately to the end you know some people might have not liked mr stevens but i would say there was a time in the book that I liked him at the beginning and then I thought no he's gutless towards the end but then the more I think about this book this book really makes you sit long and hard afterwards you you come to understand him and you come to accept the choices that he's made in his life for being able to serve someone and to think that in his head he did the best that he could and he did he did but that meant at the expense of having a life at the expense of experiencing love with Miss Kempton at the expense of so many things also at the expense of other people in society looking down at his master Lord Darlington and we get glimpses of humanity of Mr Stevens when he gets asked by people when he's a you know at at the pubs in the evenings of his trip he gets asked who he worked for and he denies that he worked for Lord Darlington so we see little glimpses of Mr Stevens becoming human and realizing that Lord Darlington himself had some I guess flaws and he didn't want to be part of that we see little glimmers of light of mr stevens going ah oh, okay right <laughs> uh i understand this but ultimately though mr stevens we see as someone who i would say was sympathetic at the end he really understood his work he really understood what he wanted to do in his life he felt that he gave it his all but now at the remains of the day at the twilight of the day he has come to terms with understanding that that service meant that he had to sacrifice other elements in his life and he accepts that well I felt that he accepted it so the remains of the day he can sit back now and say well now it's his life now he can he has an opportunity to to change his thinking he has an opportunity to reflect back and realize that Lord Darlington had his flaws just as Mr Stevens did but Mr Stevens also had the opportunity to at least use this time to reflect to me he struck me as someone who was initially quite closed quite not I wouldn't say closed-minded but his experiences was just of service of just of being a butler and so when your entire world is just about that it's no wonder I I thought that he would want to make his entire world as good and proper he wanted it for himself it, it look it is a tough one but it, it is also one that I would say that it is relevant today when we choose our employers and who we want to work with we hear so much 
you know, when it comes to work, that we want to find people and employers who align to our values, who align to the things that we believe in, and that what we do and when we do the work for them, that we want to contribute in such a way and feel as if we've done our best work for them. So there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> So yeah, this book really made me think a lot. It made me think about my military life. It made me think about my corporate life. It made me think about wanting to work at some years ago, you know, leaving the corporate world, which I did, to work for a B corporation. And a B corporation is similarly like a not-for-profit, a corporation that gives back some of its profits to um, for social good. And you may have seen these B corporations around. And I really loved working for that company because I felt as if we were doing something good. It was part of who I was. That is an element of, I guess, the professionalism and the dignity that Mr. Stevens wanted for his work. Some of the other, I guess, life lessons for me was understanding I guess the class distinctions it was really interesting to see that the difference of the snippets before and after the war before the war there seemed to be more of a class distinction after the war those distinctions get muddied in some way and they're personified in the relationships and the banter that happens in the pubs in the evening when some of the people ask and assume that Mr. Stevens is a Lord himself. And Mr. Stevens does not deny that. He just somehow white lies his way around who he was. Because I thought to myself, well, maybe he's thinking he doesn't want any conversations about Lord Darlington. He wants to keep kind of like a stiff upper lip and keep his background hidden because it brings up these awkward situations with him where he has to explain himself the actions of his employer who hasn't here done that and assumed and pretended to not work for someone or work for a company i have <laughs> the other thing that i really liked about this book because it made me think about the butler's pantry and I know this is going to sound very weird. The butler's pantry for Mr. Stevens was his place where he sat and did his thinking. That was the place that uh, he stayed in the evenings. It was his safe space. It's where he planned the staff plans and coordinated the plans. You know, there were times when Miss Kempton would come in with a, with a vase of flowers and they'd have this very formal exchange of conversation. And the formal exchange of conversation, you'd realise there was an undercurrent of more meaning underneath it. But it made me think of butler's pantries. And nowadays, a lot of the big houses that are being built i know here in australia these big monstrosities of houses with lots of bedrooms and huge kitchens and granite bench tops and things like that there's always a butler's pantry and i always wondered about that and so the butler's pantry is kind of like a little space off the kitchen area and i never knew what it was about and it, it was strange because I thought, you've got a kitchen. Why would you need a butler's pantry? What do you put in there? And people would say, oh, that's where you have your tea and coffee making facilities. That's where you, you know, you prepare your food. And that's where all the messy stuff happens in the butler's pantry. So then when you bring it out to the kitchen, that's where you can cook it all up. And I thought to myself, oh, that is really bizarre. When did we move as a society to have the butler's pantry integrated into the kitchen because that's where all the food preparation and the food cooking was happening and now we're having it moved outside are we creating i guess we're not creating class distinctions but we're certainly creating i don't know in my head that you know if you've got a butler's pantry you've got enough money to be able to keep your kitchen area separated from the meal preparation area isn't that what kitchens are about I didn't have a butler's pantry. My kitchen is a big, big mess. So I had to kind of think, isn't it weird that 
as part of society now that we're creating these big big homes and creating these little storage facilities and places that used to be in the grand estates and in in England and all over the world and we're now creating them in our homes for whatever reason so yeah very interesting so that is all I have to say about the remains of the day I would say this is now one of the top top books I have read this year and indeed this is going to be one of my top books of all time I would highly recommend it it is a beautiful book it is written beautifully and I would say the Booker Prize for this is well deserved so thank you for listening and thank you for watching bye for now